I am a sculptor. I'm a metal sculptor. I make trees to tell stories. So what I did is I devised a media 40 years ago when I started doing this that would show trees realistically and then with those trees I tell stories of people in my life. The trees are made out of parallel strands of copper wire. I, I prepare all the wire to this form where they're all parallel and then I can, using this undifferentiated form, I can then shape it and mold it into the shape you see there. So we start out like that and I first start out by, by doing the, the initial character molding. The character molding will begin to tell a story. I then take that tree when it's molded and I, and I add uh, an, an alloy into there so I heat it up and I heat it very hot and I fuse all the branches solid with this until it literally forms bronze right in place. Then I add another alloy on the surface that I can heat and work like clay. That produces the bark. So this is a, an alloy that I'm going to, to be using to, to strengthen the inner structure of the trunk so that the, so that the central root will be strong and be able to support the tree. I, pour, I get, heat this very hot and then pour it in. And, and, it, and it will make everything very solid inside of there so that the tree will um, not fall over. My trees, when they are anchored in the rocks, you cannot pull them out and they're sturdy. It takes about two weeks of the actual assembly, but I work on multiple pieces at once because there's many heating and cooling cycles, so I'm bouncing back and forth all the time. The hole in the rock will accept the main taproot of the tree and allow that tree to be firmly anchored onto the rock. This is a piece of sandstone. The hole goes deep into the rock, two inches into the rock, to give a good foothold for that tree with a taproot. Andrea is my assistant here and she does the finishing work on the tree. Up till now, I've created the tree to tell a story. And what, what Andrea is doing now is doing the final twisting on this that's going to make it really look pretty. So she's going to go over this and spend the time necessary to make all those branches look exactly the way they should be. At that point then, the tree is not yet firmly mounted, but then I will then mount it in the hole in the rock and then do some final work on the roots and some finishing and then off to the show. I set out to do this to tell stories of my brothers, first of all. I have four brothers, and I wanted to honor each one as an individual. I just used trees to tell stories. What has developed uh, eventually came to be called art, um, but it's still uh, just stories of people, and a lot of work, and a lot of passion. I like to connect people up with a tree that means something to them. When they come into my booth, I, I, look, I look at them, and I listen to them, and I find for them, and they find for themselves, a tree that's like them. So when a person buys the right tree, they will often have tears in their eyes. And they'll go, oh, and they'll say, honey, that's you. That's what I'm designed to do. I love people, and uh, this is a blessing that I can do. I want to meet people face to face and hear their stories and then connect them with a the tree. The very first tree I ever made was this tree. It's the aspen tree. And it's a story of my brother Paul and his wife. It's really two trees that are growing together with a lot of energy and supporting each other as they grow. That's Paul. My, my other brother Dan is a very different kind of a guy. He grows steady and regular, orderly, and predictable. We think sometimes he's a little boring, but we like him that way because he doesn't pull any punches and he gives great advice. Brother Dan. So I kept making trees and when my wife came along, she says, well, what kind of a tree are you? And for her, I make the red bud. The red bud is a tree that is the first colored tree I made. So I put colored flowers on there, three different colors to show the progression of flowers over three days and it reminds you that beauty is not forever. There's a, there's a movement and these flowers will drop. So you appreciate it now. And when I gave this to her, she started crying because she is a red bud and red buds are all about showing feelings. Um, 
Here's one that I made for my grandmother. It's a story of giving. They call it sanctuary. But my grandmother spent her entire life uh, trying to give everything away. Everything she got, she gave to somebody else. And by the time she reached old age, uh, she said, I'm so blessed because I've finally been able to give everything away. So this tree opens up its heart. It opens up all its limbs and it's turning itself over the forest. Its legacy is one of giving. Um, sometimes I'll take a, a tree like my aspen over here and I'll make it celebrate. And we'd have to come over to see this one. And I put gold leaf on this one. So here we have the same aspen tree now celebrating in the fall as only aspens can do. And, it, and I make it so that it can quiver. I, I do that by actually applying the gold leaf with an electrostatic process that causes the gold leaf to flutter down and become attached by one edge so it can flutter in the slightest breeze. I want to show energy, lots of energy, quivering. Uh, this tree I made for our wedding anniversary, and it's really two trees. It's called Kindred Spirits, and it's a story of two trees growing together on one rock. One's strong and powerful, the other one is small and embracing. We don't know who is who in this, in this situation, but we know when I'm in a shopping mall, this is me. When we're in the woods and there's bears around, that's my wife. So we, it, but it's a story of our marriage.